Congresswoman Dina Titus from Washington on Connected Congress. We appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us today, Congresswoman. Thank you. Always a pleasure, Jeff. Good. Um, let's begin with immigration, because as you know, the Senate has got that big immigration debate going on right now. Whatever emerges from the Senate goes to you folks in the House. President today taking a hard line, threatening to veto anything that doesn't meet his requirements of border security, limiting family immigration coming into the country. Uh, so here's my question. I mean, what immigration deal, Congresswoman, mm -hmm. do you think uh, will be able to get out of Congress? Well, I'm just not too optimistic. You know, uh, they promised to have a debate on the Senate side. We got no such promise from Speaker Ryan on our side. In fact, he said he would only pass something that the president will sign. And you just outlined exactly what that is, his four points. So whatever the Senate does, and I understand that's kind of falling apart, it's not likely to pass over here. We've heard some rumors that they're going to bring forth the Goodlatte bill, but that's just terrible. I can't imagine any Democrats voting for that. Uh, I'm not sure what leverage we have after the recent vote on the CR, but we'll have to just keep fighting. We've tried over 20 times to bring a DACA bill to the floor. Every time the Republicans have rejected it, if they really want to fix DACA, they could do that this afternoon and then worry about the rest of the comprehensive immigration reform bill and second uh, piece of legislation. Are you worried that uh, protection for dreamers is, as we speak, I mean, it's really in serious jeopardy at this point? Well, I think it is. We have until March the 5th to get it done, and time is going by very rapidly. Now, some people think that the president will extend that, maybe or maybe not. Even if he does, our, our neighbors, our students, our friends will continue to live under a cloud and be worried about what happens next. And if he doesn't extend it, he says, well, maybe that's not going to be a big priority for ICE to round up dreamers. But many of our families are mixed status, so even if the dreamer were protected, and that's a big if, other members of his family or her family might not be. Let's talk about, I want to talk about the Russian collusion right now, the, the allegations of a Russian collusion. Uh, uh -huh. President Trump still hasn't released, hasn't greenlighted the release of the Democratic memo, which rebutted the Republican House Intelligence memo on, on, on alleged Russian collusion. Uh, what's your take on that? I mean, why the delay? And do you think we're ever going to get to see the, the Democratic response here? Well, I wasn't surprised that he didn't want to release it. I mean, he's already proven what he wanted to see come out of that committee, and that's what Nunes has done. Uh, if they do release it, it will be heavily redacted, so it really won't serve any purpose. We believe all of this flap, including the original Republican memo, is just an attempt to try to uh, make Mueller not look legitimate, try to legitimize, delegitimize him, delegitimize the FBI so that they can get away from the collusion argument. And if they do find a smoking gun and do find evidence of collusion, the president can just poo poo it by saying that was political. Look at this memo I have. Of course, that memo came out written by the Republican staff, not uh, supported by any Democrats, not allowed to be rebutted. So so it seems to me that's just a political attempt to hide something. Uh, you saw the president's budget. He rolled it out, what I think, on Monday. Uh, it, came, it contained $120 million for Yucca Mountain licensing. Not a surprise for a lot of us here in Nevada, but nonetheless, right. now it's in print. Um, do you think that the project could actually get back on track? Well, there's so much bad in that budget, and the Yucca Mountain is just one piece of it. But yeah, he says that we want to go forward with the licensing. Now, we know there are members of the House who would like to see that happen, uh, and we'll be pushing it. The Senate's not nearly as excited about it as the House is. We still have our consent-based legislation saying, put it where people want it, and that's the best way to do it, and that's our argument. So we'll see, but uh, there will be forces that do not want to stop until they see it come to Nevada and get it out of their backyard. Remember, we don't produce any of this waste, but places that do, like Illinois, where Shimkus uh, represents, and that's uh, the person who's pushing it the most in the house, and who has gotten lots of contributions from that industry, they want to get rid of it and they want to send it to us. We have the muscle to stop it. 
Well, we will certainly keep trying. You know, I've been out there on this issue for 30 years, and we were at every hearing in the middle of the night to fight against it, and the delegation is pretty united. We have a young delegation in the House, and two members aren't coming back on the Democratic side, but uh, we certainly won't give up trying. You know me, Jeff. Yes, I do, Congresswoman. I've got one final question. We're almost out of time. Um, it's a little over four months now since okay. our mass shooting on the Strip. Um, are we making any headway, Congresswoman, yes. on bump stock legislation? No, in fact, it's just the opposite. You know, I had two different pieces of legislation on bump stocks, one to outlaw them altogether and one to regulate them like we regulate machine guns because, in effect, that's what they are. They make a regular gun operate like a machine gun. Neither of those has passed. They wouldn't even do a study on it to, to, that has any kind of teeth in it. But what they did was move in the opposite direction and pass one of the NRA's main priorities, which was to allow concealed weapon reciprocal carry all across the United States. And Nevada's got a fairly loose or fairly uh, open concealed weapon carry, but it's not as loose as Idaho or Montana. So now we all move to the wide open, uh, anybody can carry anywhere. Congresswoman, anything else you would like to tell your constituents today? Well, you know, there's another shooting today. Uh, so here's more evidence that we need to take some action to, to look at gun violence. I had an empty seat as my guest for the uh, State of the Union address to symbolize those people who were shot in my district on October the 1st. This is a fight we must continue to wage. Congresswoman Dina Titus joining us on Connect to Congress from Washington. Congresswoman, thank you very much. Thank you.